Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. This time, look at a uh, caps lock flashing LED issue on a keyboard here. That signifies there's a fault. I covered this, I think it was in part four or part five of the A500 repair series there. So this keyboard has been intermittently behaving this way. And the interesting thing is if you tap it, occasionally, look, hang on, occasionally it will, it will be okay. So it's like a bad connection. See that? It, it did stop flashing. It's really weird, this one. You saw it flash, stop flashing then when I did that. Look, and then it stopped. It is really, really weird. My initial thought when it started flashing was that it was going to be this MCU here. So I've ordered one of these. I've got one of these spare. I'm not sure there's any bad solder points on this. It's just really weird how just a slight tap and it stops flashing. The crystal on here was a bit loose. Now, I'm not sure if the crystal's the issue. It feels like it's been mangled a bit. I don't think it is the crystal, to be fair. What I did do, off camera, solder the underneath and then solder the top side of here on those two crystal contacts. But that doesn't seem to be the issue. But what is strange, and what would kind of indicate that maybe it isn't the keyboard MCU, is the fact you can see flash, 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 and if I tap the keyboard, just watch. Look, stop, hang on. Stop flashing for a second, it's not as regular. See, I was thinking maybe I'm imagining things, but I did manage to get it to not flash them when I was tapping. So, I'm not sure I'm not sure what to make of this. I'll start by examining the uh, PCB, see if there's any clues on the PCB itself. Then I might just swap the keyboard MCU out, I think. And of course, when this happens, the keyboard is non-responsive. Nothing apart from Control Amiga Amiga will work. And I think the reason Control Amiga Amiga works is it's kind of like directly connected to the, the, the reset on the A500. So it's, I think there's that combination maybe are not scanned or something like that. I, mean, I can try that now. So we've got Time Gal running there. I'll do Control Amiga Amiga. And you can see that works. And once the Amiga resets, it resets the keyboard as well. You know, that stopped flashing now. This is what is really bizarre about this, and it is just this keyboard. If I swap the keyboard out for another keyboard, I don't get the issue, and I get this on every machine I connect this up to. Uh, I was using this on my A2000. There's probably a jump cut here in the sense that the keys, can you see they look really faded, uh, and these look bleached, you know, like whitish, and they shouldn't do. But these look a weird kind of dirty cream. It's hard to explain, but that was from a Retrobrite process that went wrong on my A500, but you've not seen that video yet, the actual... Uh, where I swapped this over. Um, I bought a spare keyboard, and this is the one that I bought just for testing purposes of various machines, and I've ended up swapping the, uh, the the keyboards over effectively. But using the same controller board here, so it was sold as faulty, behaving this way. Uh, it's just a question of, you know, what is the cause? Anyway, we'll inspect the board and then maybe swap out the uh, MCU. Out of interest, let's just see if we can inf influence the uh, flash in here by tapping it. Let's see if we can get it to... Well, there we go. It did flash there, you saw that. So, it must be a bad connection. Unless it's the wires. I don't think it's the wires. I'm moving the wires now. No, it's not the wires. I'll try tapping the actual chips. Very strange. Look. There, there we go. And it's going one, two, one, two, one, two, instead of one. It's interesting now, once it starts to error, it doesn't come out of the error loop, though, so there could be multiple issues going on here. So the replacement uh, keyboard controller there. Um, but I mean, everything from the top side looks okay here. Then, as I say, that crystal was a bit wobbly 
maybe the crystal resonator is the issue. I don't know, you can see, can you see? I added two beads of solder there because I wasn't sure if it had uh, fatigued on the top part, but the crystal was a little bit loose and I soldered it on the bottom side as well. So maybe it's just this uh, oscillator here, you know, this resonator. Anyway, let's, uh, let's just unscrew this plastic uh, protective thing here. So I think there are three or four screws hold this in place here. And I'm going to put the screws back in actually, just so that the membrane doesn't get pulled, you know, the ribbon from the membrane connects to this. I just want it to be held in place but be able to remove that, uh, that one will do it. Just remove this uh, piece of plastic here. And you can see it's the same thing over here, a couple of screws here, well one over the plastic, there we go. So now the plastic will kind of like twist out of the way, that's what I want. Let's get that screw back into there. So I've inspected the top and the bottom side. I'll show you uh, what I've spotted. I don't think this is going to be the issue. So the uh, pieces of the ceramic uh, cap here, you know, there's like little bits that go over the legs. They've been chipped off. There's a bit of this one here just floating on the board. Same with this one, because they've been squashed down by someone in the past. So could either of those capacitors be causing the problem? I think it's unlikely. They're probably going to be uh, like bypass caps, uh, you know, just smoothing out uh, noise and stuff. We could check these two through hole electrolytics here. I'll do that on the uh, meter in a minute. I have seen those be an issue on these keyboards before, but it seems it's weird the tap thing, isn't it? That's what I don't get. There's a tantalum down here. Those can short. Um, I'll measure that to make sure it's not short. I don't think that's the issue. Um, there's nothing else really on the top side. It's a bit dirty. I'll clean up with cotton buds in a second. And again on the underside here, I've inspected pretty thoroughly. I see no issues with bad solder points anywhere on that. It looks uh, pristine. The only thing I did spot there, and I'm not sure if you can see it, there's a bit of the solder mask worn off that connection there. But I think that's just going to uh, the area where the LEDs are somewhere up there, I don't know. So I can't imagine that being the issue, and I don't think there's a break. I'll measure that on the connectivity just to make sure that's good. So we'll test those two caps. We'll do them uh, in circuit. One of them is just here, I think. Let's just see if we can get connections on there. Yeah, that's showing 10 microfarad. ESR, 5.6 ohms, that has turned into a resistor. But we are measuring in circuit. See that? So let, let's pull that one out, I think. Uh, let me just measure the other one. So the other one is up here. Yeah, so the other one is here. Yeah, it's coming out in circuit leaky. So anyway, I'll take them off to measure them, I think. So let's just desolder that cap. It's the, uh, the small one there. The easiest thing to do here, it might be to cut off that cable tie and then you can pull that off completely. I may do that if I'm uh, struggling with this because it'll flip back and you'll just melt it. I'll go and see if I've got a better cap than this. It is pretty small, so 16 volt, 10 microfarad. You can see, look at that, four ohms. As it's cooling down here after heating it, it's going up. Because it was measuring about five in circuit, it wasn't like four ohms. I think it is showing about five ohms. So, would that be causing a problem? Well, it wouldn't be related to the tapping. That's the thing I'm having a hard time understanding. And thinking about it, if the oscillator wasn't working, it wouldn't be flashing the uh, LED there. So it can't be the oscillator. You know, the resonator. It could be uh, a bad bond wire inside the IC, maybe. You know, the wires that go to the, the, piece, uh, the, the pin on the edge of the chip. If one of those internally is making a bad connection, that's the sort of thing you will get. So it could still be the keyboard MCU. Anyway, we'll swap out that cap. Yeah, look at the difference here. This is uh, a really cheap brand. It's like a no-name brand. It's less than an ohm. It's the same voltage and everything, so... The microfarad rating's a bit less. Let me see if I can find a better cap. So this one's an even cheaper brand. I think this is a Suntan or something. Look at that. That's even better. I'm going to go with that, actually. 0.54, and it's uh, slightly better on the capacitance. Yeah, so... I think that cap needed replacing. We'll check the other one as well. So I've mounted it flat at a slight angle. I'll show you in a sec. If we just uh, heat that one pin, 
the difficulty is trying to hold that blooming plastic away. I should have just cut the cable tie off, it would have been far easier. Just trim the legs off, I'll clean off the flux in a second. Yeah, so you can see I just laid it flat there and just made sure that the uh, legs are not uh, shorting in the nut. You could put some heat shrink over them, that's going to be fine. Anyway, let's, uh, let's get that one off and just check that. So this one's not great either, it's a 22 microfarad. Capacitance is coming out, the SR, yeah, a little bit high, 2.9. Because it's a uh, low voltage, you'd expect a higher ESR anyway, but still, I suspect if you can find another 22, we're going to get something less than an ohm. So I'll swap that out while I'm here as well. These small caps never weather very well. You know, if you compare to the ones on the NA500 motherboards, you'll probably find that most of them are okay. Uh, but these tiny, tiny ones, uh, and the big 3300s, the, the main smoothing caps, those are the ones that tend to get affected on A500s. Yeah, so I've got a uh, no-name brand there. It's come at 1.14, so it's just above an ohm. I'll uh, go from others, see if we've got any uh, others of a similar size and the right voltage. So I've got a Panasonic FR series here, uh, 50 volts, so it's just a bit bigger physically. Look at that, 0.18. I might just go with that one actually. Yeah, let's go with that one. So I didn't expect that to solve it, I tested it anyway, it's just the same. And we still got, you know, the tapping thing, which is weird. I even pulled this down and clipped it back up again in case there was a bad connection there. I've inspected the wires, they're all right. So it's really weird. Anyway, we'll swap this next. I am gonna desolder that. So in theory, this should be easier than when uh, the board is double-sided. The pins seem to have all snapped off here, just grabbing two or three at once and have a little bit of a pivot. Obviously inspect the magnification because you don't want to leave bits of solder on there and then try this because you will just break the pads off, especially with it being a single, well it's not really a single sided board, but the pads on this side are single. So that should come off I think. It's just a question of how loose it is. And I think the answer is very actually, it's, it's ready to come off that. I'm going to try and get some leverage on this side without squishing that cap. Yeah, it's coming through. The issue here is some of the pins have been bent a little bit, so it can make it a little bit fiddly to uh, to get it off. There we go, it's out. That's it. No damage. So, let's get the new chip on there. I'm not going to put a socket. It's probably not enough space uh, physically. got to hope this chip actually works because it's untested at the moment. I soldered the uh, diagonal corners there and uh, just make sure it's straight. So I'll clean all the flux off the underside in a minute and that red mark. But the good thing is, the keyboard is working. Obviously I need to test to make sure all the keys work. And it's not sensitive to the tapping like it was. Now, there was definitely not a bad solder point on that chip. So that I find particularly interesting, actually, that tapping it influenced the behaviour. I'm going to keep that other chip anyway, I'll just mark it up as intermittent. That seems to have solved it there. Well, that's not what I expected. Started off thinking it was going to be a bad solder point. So, we'll just quickly test the keyboard. Yeah, all working, fantastic. So it's been on for quite a while, just giving it a final whack in here. Normally, it errors within the first few minutes, you know, certainly if you start using it. What we're finding is you'd start typing, a few characters work, and then it start flashing. And if you typed really, really carefully, it was all right. So, I mean, that could point you towards thinking there is a bad, or the was a bad solder point on the MCU there. I'm pretty sure there wasn't 
uh, thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly inspected the solder points there. They look good as new. So yeah, I mean, I'm, I've kept the old MCU, stuck a label on top of the old one just to say it's intermittent. Uh, it's useful for testing, but this is now rock solid, so that was the issue. So just clean them with a cotton bud and uh, some IPA here. The solder points are pretty good on them actually. I'm always wipe that red label off the. Yeah, you can see it's come off. And um, we'll have a clean of the top side with a cotton bud as well. And we'll clean the LEDs. So only a short video, I had to do the things in this video though to get this keyboard up and running. Because not only is it a test keyboard, you can see I've got the A2000 keyboard adapter there. Uh, but I needed it for another project, which you'll see in probably the second video from this one, if that makes sense. There'll be another one after this and it'll be the one after that that this keyboard relates to. But the MCU is definitely, definitely, definitely the problem. I know that because on one of the other keyboards I've got here, I removed the MCU, put the old one from this keyboard into that one, and the same problem was back, and it was tap sensitive again. So, really weird. It's got to be a bond wire or something within the IC. Anyway, I do hope you found the video interesting. Please see the Coffee and Patreon links down below if you'd like to support the channel. I'll catch you in the next video.